let's take a look at some of the running backs that were taken in the NFL draft. And of course, up at the top, B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs. I think that was one of the most surprising things for me in seeing Jameer Gibbs go 12th overall, Detroit trading back and saying they would be comfortable. They were comfortable taking him even earlier than that, but they wanted to get their guy. They trade back a little bit. I, I'm like everybody else. I love Bijan in Atlanta. I don't know if it was the right call for them. I would like to see them. You talk about value in the draft. I would like to see them maybe get an edge rusher or something like that, but certainly this offense is going to fly. Uh, Zach Charbonnet was the only running back taken in the the second round into Seattle. That was a little bit of a surprise. We kind of, we didn't pour one out for Kenneth Walker, but we we don't, we, I don't really like his prospects as a pass catcher in this uh, backfield now that they bring in Charbonnet. You see the four running backs that go into the third round. Johnson, the only guy in Chicago there, um, well, drafted to Chicago. There's multiple backs now in Chicago with Khalil Herbert uh, in, in town as well as Deontay Foreman. And then uh, a couple running backs there in round five. Just stayed true to round five. There's some other guys that went, you know, around six, round seven, Zach Evans to the Rams, things like that. But what do you make of this board? I don't know if you could talk the top of it or what stands out when you look at some of these backs. I mean, I think the Seattle pick probably stands out the most uh, just because taking Charbonnet in the second round after bringing in Kenneth Walker, where some people thought Kenneth Walker in the second round was interesting for the fact that, you know, they already had Chris Carson and some other backs who were doing well at, at that point in time. So it's really doubling up. I would probably be more concerned if it wasn't the Seahawks and the Seahawks <laughs> having all of these extra picks that, you know, Pete Carroll and John Schneider just could not resist going running back there. So I don't think it necessarily means that that's competition for Walker, but there was something with Kenneth Walker, especially down the stretch in the season where he had a very good efficiency. If you look at a per play basis, but his success rate wasn't that high. So right. it was very boomer bust. And, you know, that's a big factor for NFL coaches. When they look at, they want to have success when they're running the ball, sometimes more often than having a big efficiency gain. Cause you can do that through, through passing the ball. So I think that's probably one of the more interesting picks. And as far as the picks up, up at the top, I mean, Jameer Gibbs, maybe this is like a, Javi best sort of uh, pick for the D Detroit Lions. Uh, CJ Spiller are probably better comps for him mm -hmm. than someone like Alvin Kamara, who weighs, you know, 15 pounds more. Um, and I think he could be used in that sort of role. And Jared Goff is someone who's willing to, you know, dump the ball off. He's not a running quarterback who takes away a lot of those looks there. So I do think it's going to be really, really interesting. And they were just done, obviously, with DeAndre Swift. We saw he was used last year. He was drafted very early. I think it was the second pick of the second round. But he was by the previous, you know, administration there. So they were willing to wash their hands of Swift. And he's going to come in immediately, Gibbs, and really have a big role there. The question will be, if you're outside of maybe a PPR format, how much can you rely on him? But it sounds like they want to use him a lot and use him immediately in year one. Yeah, I well said, dude. I, I didn't think it was a great pick, again, with the whole running backs that early. But the offensive line is good in Detroit. They had a really nice season last year. Clearly, they have some, some plans for him. They moved on from Swift right away, which is something that we thought would happen when the pick was made immediately. And, you know, the Jack Campbell pick, kind of a head scratcher at 18. And I think he's a good player as well, linebacker. But I thought they rebounded in the second round, like Sam Laporta, I thought was a really good pick. Maybe a little bit surprising to go ahead of a guy like Michael Mayer, but they get their, you know, maybe franchise quarterback or the next quarterback to kind of overtake Jared Goff in, in a couple of years and Hendon Hooker as well. So I thought that they had a nice rebound in round two. And I'm unsure about what to expect from Gibbs. I know he's very explosive. He's a good pass catcher as well. Uh, but I, Montgomery is also a good pass catcher, and he's uh, he's a pretty good running back in his own. And he may just be the goal line back here in Chicago. So it could be, or Detroit rather, it could be a bit of a, a split backfield. One more time about these running backs. I don't know if you have any thoughts here. Uh, I do want to get your thoughts on maybe potential winners and losers. But um, like Tank Bigsby in Jacksonville, and you just kind of touched on Charbonnet. So I think before the draft, Kevin, Kenneth Walker and Travis Etienne were guys that people were ranking as top 12 running backs. Maybe you can get them as your RB1. I know that they were drafted that way in best ball. You already touched on Kenneth Walker. Maybe we see a bit of a downtick from him, especially in the passing game, even though he wasn't really involved anyways, but I don't think he will be at all. Do you feel like Bigsby can cut into Etienne or is that just overlooking it a little bit too much? Because he is a, 
a short yardage back that is built differently than ETN. Yeah, I think he might. I mean, there was an issue last season with ETN where I thought he had a really great year. He had some really big fumbles, uh, some fumbles on the goal line, some fumbles in short yardage that maybe play into that a little bit. So I would be a little bit concerned there. But it's just tough with running backs because even once we're getting into the fifth, sixth, well, I guess even fourth (laughs) player who's taken, it's not a lot of draft capital being invested in these guys. So sometimes when they're spending a mid third round pick on them, we might take it as being a bigger sign of what will happen than what will actually happen when they're just looking for depth in that room. Um, I guess if I'm going to pick out any one of this group, and this is someone who was taken obviously a lot later here, uh, fifth round pick, I'm interested in Chase Brown for the Bengals only because we don't really know what's going to happen with Joe Mixon. He has some you know, menacing charges that are out there against him. I mean, I'm no legal expert, but it doesn't sound great. He has a pretty big contract, so being able to you know, offload that could be something. And again, it, it's a day three pick. It's pretty late. Chris Evans is still there, who was a late pick for them uh, a couple of drafts ago. But if you look at Chase Brown, at least from a metric standpoint, he was great as far as broken tackles, which is one of the kind of advanced metrics that's more sticky going from college to pros. He ran a 4 at 209 pounds, 40-inch vertical, 10-7 broad jump. You know, he, he hit everything as far as athleticism is concerned. And he's an older prospect having played five years but i don't think that matters that much for guys who can immediately come in and make an impact and he had you know 1600 yards rushing and an additional 240 receiving in his final season so big big time production someone can really carry the load so it's a low probability type of thing but if you talk about how you're going to weave forward for someone maybe having a really big role i don't know if he impresses and mixon is on the wrong side of things or is let go who knows what he could slide into as a guy who at least is big enough to take on a bigger load yeah, Mixon is a complete wild card. You know, it's, yeah, not breaking any news there, but he yeah. is, uh, he's he could, guy could be cut at any moment. I think there were some reports about restructuring his contract, but still could be cut at any moment. And he's had multiple off field issues for sure. Um, but there's just something with Doug Peterson that I've seen over the years and using multiple backs. And I know that's kind of the way that the NFL has gone. It's just, and that's a prime example of what Detroit just did, right? Signing Montgomery and still, you know, spending that capital on Jameer Gibbs is having multiple running backs. You no, know, Peterson has a history of doing that and I did see what you saw last time last year at times with like some fumbles near the goal line and Jamichael Hasty getting in there near the end of the season on the goal line or some short yardage stuff so I don't feel like he's gonna Bigsby's gonna come in and get like 10 to 12 carries and take away all that usage that ETN has and I'm sure he's gonna see fewer stack boxes with you know adding Calvin Ridley to the offense and how great that offense was down the down the stretch of the season but I could see Bigsby frustrating ETN owners like near the goal line or third and one or just things like that, getting in there and and getting those short yardage. But you need to have a guy like that. Uh, I just don't think ETN is, is really built that way. 